Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a preset tutorial talking about the bevel curve preset, which is commonly used in my tutorials. This is mainly to do the curve to mesh function and uh, providing a UV for this new mesh. After that, I would like to share some stories and histories about these presets uh, because there were many different methods proposed for curve UV generations to solve various kinds of problem, but uh, there were some edge cases as well, and so on. So I would like to share these stories for interest, but also to illustrate how this preset is important and can help your workflow. So let's start. So here we are in Blender, and I already have a curved circle and I have a plane. Normally when you're working with this uh, legacy curve system, uh, it's not visible in render. So if you go to material preview mode and you enable, uh, you disable this overlay, then you do not see that in the final render. You have to make that into a mesh so that to make that to have a volume. And uh, it's very simple. You just go to the data section and the geometry panel, there's a barrel option. Then you increase the depth. Then you are making that into a donut. This is basically the idea, very simple. But how to do that in geometry node? It's kind of simple. Uh, you start with a geometry node tree and uh, you can get any kind of curve, let's just say curve circle. And uh, it's equally true that we need to uh, make that into a mesh. So we take a curve to mesh and uh, it's already a mesh, but there is no volume. So we put a, another curve circle as a profile curve and then we decrease the radius to make it look better. So we have a kind of donuts and we can change the resolution and so on. So this seems kind of easy. It doesn't take uh, too many nodes, three nodes in total. But what's really problematic is that if you want to get it in UV. So I already created a kind of material of a checker texture and I have a UV map. So I can take a set of material to add a material. But if you go to material preview and let's add a material for it, you can see the uh, curve object contains its UV map and uh, its UV, but I do not have anything in my geometry nodes generated curve. So this is the common problem that people are having. In the history, there were multiple methods proposed for this UV generation. Uh, the earliest method is to simply capture a spline parameter from each curve and synthesize its UV to X and Y. And then we store UV map. I talked about this preset uh, just the last tutorial. This is basically just a store named attribute, but the reason it's a preset is because we always need to change that to 2D vector and the face corner and the type in this UV map in order to have shader to recognize this attribute. Okay, nothing special, but there is a huge downside of this method. It works fine normally, but when one of the member is cyclic, for example, this curved circle is cyclic, then you are going to have this weird line in the middle. And it's not really resolvable. You can make that negligible if you are trying to increase too much amount of solve subdivision, but then your mesh becomes very dense compared to very light version of it. So what's the problem? Why it happens? Uh, it happens because this spline parameter goes from start to the end of a curve as 0 to 1. However, when it's a cyclic, this 0 and the 1 are together. So this line is 0 and the 1 at the same time. So render engine gets confused about how to map a UV to that. That's why there is a search kind of issue. So inspired by developers, I used to use a simple method that uh, there is a set spline cyclic. You are just uh, making a cyclic curve non-cyclic or the opposite. 
So if we directly use that, then this curve is not cyclic anymore, but it also leaves a gap. So I create a preset to resolve this kind of problem that I make the curve non-cyclic. It solves this kind of UV problem and it does not have any kind of gaps. But since this is a non-cyclic curve, you are having this gap. It's not really a problem because it's just a thin line. Uh, but sometimes people may notice from outside the geometry. And this problem becomes especially problematic if you're taking this uh, curved circle as a donut. And then you're having this kind of issue. Okay. And obviously, if you do not use it, you're going to have this cyclic issue as well. So this is not really an optimal method. But this was the initial proposal. Later, people proposed a new method, which was due to the development of this face corner domain in which we can set a UV map. So initially, everything was actually being captured on the point domain. And we are having this kind of issue because uh, this point is both 0 and 1 at the same time. But for face corner, uh, because we split this face into different corners, so we can have one on one side, but the zero on the other side, then it will solve the problem. So what happens is that we do a curve to mesh and a capturing UV map for these kind of curve lines outside the original curve to mesh. And then we sample this kind of face corner and generate this UV map. This is fine. This is absolutely okay. And it solves the problem that we no longer have this kind of weird gaps. But there is a edge case which will introduce the problem that is feeding the caps. Right so now, if we hit these field caps, you can see the caps is being filled and UV is not being changed. But this is very misleading because we only have one curve. Uh, in reality, the advantage of using geometry nodes is that you're instancing thousands or billions of curves for whatever reasons. And let's say if we just duplicate just a single curve, so let's take another spiral by using this transform geometry. And I just move that away. Then you realize uh, there's very weird UV and there is also a kind of a splitting occurs. Why is that? This is very easy to understand because we're feeling the gaps that it creates additional corners. And when it's a sample index, these corners also receive a UV for the sec from the second curve. And then this index is essentially being shifted, causing this kind of weird offset. So can we solve that by filling the caps? It does not make sense because there is no caps being filled when both curves are non-cyclic. So this problem will persist when you're working with these field caps methods. Here, I also want to mention that uh, we are constructing this UV by using the span parameter, but uh, field caps is not a part of it. So you won't have this kind of cap UV anyway. Not to say it's causing the problem in this particular case, and also, this is a very preliminary method to fill the caps. So it's just a, an ungon. There is no triangles or any other things. And you don't have options to decide its topology too. So here you may think that uh, let's stop taking the advantage of this spur parameter. Let's think that as a regular mesh, whether it's a Suzanne Monkey, Cylinder, cone, whatever, uh, because we can always do a UV unwrap. 
I discussed this note last time in my UV tutorial, and I always discourage people to use that because it's extremely slow, and it's basically kind of useless. If you UV unwrap without a seam, you see it's not really functioning. You have to create a seam by your own. So let's just give you an example that we are doing this edge angle selection. So you can see there is a gray and white. Let's make it greater than so that we are limiting the edge angle to only start at the end so that we have a seam here and there. Okay. And we plug this selection into the seam and we unwrap this UV and plug that into this UV map. I want to call your attention that currently this is cost 0 0.23 milliseconds. But as soon as we plug that in, then it becomes 700 milliseconds. This is definitely not acceptable. I mean, this is like 200 times, no, more than 200 times. This is hor horrible. And this is not yet a very dense geometry yet. And by looking at its UV map, it doesn't look kind of very nice. This is partially because that, uh, uh, this is partially because we didn't have a seam created in the middle of this sphere. We only created it at the start and the end. But I don't think it looks nice anyway. So if we go to material preview mode, it looks kind of whatever, I don't know. It just looks kind of very weird and ugly. And regardless, by having this 700 milliseconds, it's already a huge no-no. So never try to think about this UV unwrap. This is such an evil option. So we finally turn into the last method I can think of, uh, which is very extreme. We basically discard this option of fill caps. We fill caps using instancing methods to this kind of curves. Okay. And well, at some point it's kind of working, but definitely you need to merge by distance. And here I need to realize the instance I noticed. And then I need to, I can do a bevel curve. Yeah, it's kind of fine. Shading has some problem somehow, because the normal is facing the other direction. Here and there, yes, the normal is facing the other direction. But anyway, this is just a kind of example. In reality, everything needs to be more complicated because you definitely would like to link the resolutions together so that you change one, you change the other. And you need to set, what if you are set the curve radius? Then you realize you also need to scale these end caps uh, equally true and so on and so forth. So whatever I discussed so far is just an example. In reality, even the previous two things are very complicated. You realize in all methods, there are lots of nodes being involved. That's why presetize them is always very important. So finally, that comes to our main topics today, which I would like to discuss the preset usage. Uh, so well, let's create a new geometry node tree. Let's start with just a curved circle. And we can do a bevel curve. And ta-da, just the one node that we have this kind of a bevel curve. We can change the resolutions, radius, and so on. And we already have a UV map being generated. You can visualize that. It's a very fine. And I need to do the store UV map. I didn't do that by default uh, inside of this node group because if you store in the UV map, you always cost a certain performance regardless. Okay. Because you need to generate a UV. This is also why developers separate this kind of mesh and UV map as a separate options. So that if you do not use this UV map, then it will never be generated to cost performance. And then we take a set of materials. We take these materials. Then ta -da, we don't have any kind of uh, ugly things. Uh, there's uh, some issues with it, but I think it's kind of easy to solve. You can use uh, UV by length. 
so that this UV can be scaled with our mesh. But UV by factor will make that stick to the mesh. So that's if you want to scale it up, you can just the uh, vector mask to scale it manually. So there are different characteristics of these kind of options. Now you don't necessarily to understand the details of that. What's really important, however, is what if we're feeding the caps? So here, the first option we see is the cap segment. Zero means no caps. Any positive number means we are going to have caps. And uh, because of its good implementation, by increasing cap segments, you won't have any caps. Because this is a cyclic curve, there is no point to generate the caps anywhere in this whatever stuff. But as soon as you switch that into a non-cyclic curve, then you are going to have caps, and it will be beveled. You can decrease the segment to allow more angles to bevel. And it's kind of very nice. And because we're using the instancing method, which also means that you can make it into a spherical one instead of a flat one. But of course, it will lose the meaning of a bevel, whatever. Does not really matter. Uh, what's really important, however, is a UV, because we're discussing that every time. And you can see it's kind of working. By factor means everything is sticked to 0 to 1. So by scaling the radius, it's still, uh, the UV is also scaled with it. But if you use the balance, then the UV will be stretched with that as well. Okay. And uh, you can also change the scale of it individually. But I don't think there's any meaning to change this option. It's just uh, made. But I don't think it's really useful or whatever. And uh, although it's more rare, but it's also made possible for custom bevel. So you have this quadrilateral, which is basically just a square or rectangle curve. There are definitely other modes as well. Uh, you can make that into a custom bevel and you can see it's working. But there is a downside of it. Uh, this is a blender limitation that uh, we cannot increase the segments for these kind of things. So you either fill the segments or you don't fill the segments. Okay. But uh, I don't think it's very common that you are going to use it. We can try with other modes. I don't know what it is. Trapezoid, yeah, it's working. We have night. Oh no, it's a kit, whatever. So anyway. Uh, by the way, it might be a little bit misleading that uh, this cap segment is up to 5. But it's only because I think 5 is already good enough. You can make that into 25, 55, 125, that's not really matter. But uh, I don't think it's really meaningful to have this dense amount. So I would say 5 is the maximum I would go. And uh, there's definitely cost whenever you increase to the cap segments or whenever you feel the cap there will be increasing amounts of performance but I think it's 100% tolerable given this advanced function we have and uh, at last I just want to say that you realize that previously we are having lots and lots of nodes but right now we only have one node for all these kind of functions and I'm very satisfied with it. And I hope you can uh, use that and uh, help to improve your workflow. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.